Welcome once again to Hunter's Entertainment on Twitch.tv. My name is Noxweiler Burf, and I am your game master and guide through a dark and challenging world of survival horror. Tonight, as we do every Tuesday evening, we are playing Outbreak Undead. This game is not for the faint of heart, and I, as the game master, have confirmed consent with each and every one of my players. Our lines and veils have been very firmly drawn and we have safety protocols in place to assist and protect everyone at the table tonight. We ask you for your consent as well, and we encourage you to read the content warnings very closely. This game offers us all an opportunity to explore dark themes, to shine a light on the human condition in the safe confines of our imagination. However, that takes the bravery and support of each and every one of us, you included. You see, not every character here in this game is being played with the same objectives and motivations. Some are working against each other. Others are in communication with dangerous outside forces. Simply put, anything could happen. In this world, there are no magical swords to be discovered, no valiant knights or castle walls to hide behind. The dangers here far, far worse than those that you might find in a fantasy realm. This world wears the face of a dead world that is all too familiar to you and I. We can see it around us now. What might be if the world were ever to turn this way? Still, in the greatest darkness, hope burns the brightest. I would like to thank both JB Jara and Alex Hillman, and in fact, the entire Hunters team for helping us to make this campaign happen. Without their support, we simply wouldn't be here. Please sign up for the Scry program in our panels below, and you can engage directly with the communities of our little apocalypse. You can take on the role of a survivor yourself and help to divert resources to where you think they might be needed most. Your choices tonight will mean the difference between life and death. It will aid or harm the settlements within the rag and bone universe. Everything matters. Think carefully about your choices. Our tireless undead moderators are currently in the chat and they're prepared to help you by answering any questions that you might have. We ask that you support their efforts and show them the respect that they so richly deserve. If you enjoy this content, as always, we ask that you make a little noise for us on social media. Help us to grow, bring more survivors into the fold so that we may continue to bring you this content week after week. You can join in on our Discord and connect with others who also watch our program. Together, you can formulate plans and navigate your way through this dark ride. Enough of all of that, however, allow me to introduce you to you, the players in tonight's little nightmare. Michelle, welcome back. Would you like to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, what you do on the internet, and the character that you'll be playing tonight? Sure. My name is Michelle and Bridal. You can find me everywhere on the internet at I am Cherry Bunny on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can also find me, obviously, here every Tuesday for Hunters, which I love. And on Wednesdays, you can find me over on Official Paizo. I'm playing a game called Secrets of Magic uh, for the new Pathfinder campaign. And it's very fun. Uh, this week, you can also catch me on um, Thursday for uh, Pretty Little Liches by uh, DM's Guild. That'll be at, I want to say 4.30? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Tell me if you can remember. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's something. It's something. I'll tell you when it gets back to me. <laughs> yes. It's, so just listen in because there's someone else here involved. Um, and then on Friday night, I'm actually going to be playing uh, some Starfinder, supporting the Humble Bundle uh, special that's happening over there um, on Hyper RPG. It's going to be a weird mushroomy time. It's a busy week. Oh, and today, God, sorry. Today I'm playing Faith. <laughs> um, Faith went full Anakin Skywalker last episode and uh, <laughs> brought in like the fury of the capital, uh, or sorry, the Citadel, um, into uh, the uh, cannibals' uh, village and, and just killing everything, um, getting revenge for the death of my adopted brother, Omar. And um, Rowan's a little worried about me, I think, but I've brushed it off for now. So probably nothing bad will happen to me. Probably nothing bad. 
Marquia, welcome back. Would you please talk a little bit about everything that you do on the internet and the character that you'll be playing tonight? Hello, uh, I'm Marquia McCarty. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Marquia McCarty. Here on Twitch is Darth Marquia. Facebook people, it's Marquia TV. Uh, yeah, I am a professional TTRPG player and uh, voiceover artist, along with being an actor. And it looks like I'm going to be an actor again with some things coming up. So I'm going to have like some Luis style updates, uh, you know, in a bit. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, otherwise than that, oh, if you enjoy uh, horror, and you probably do if you're watching this, go ahead and check out Something Scary. We are a podcast. We are also uh, an animated weekly um, horror video. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash snarled to check that out. We focus on multicultural urban legend and folklore uh, together with just like that plain old creepy horror that keeps you up at night. So uh, go ahead and check that out. So as for here, my character, Achira Samson, uh, she, <laughs> well, <clears throat> her best friend uh, has been in the clutches of a murderous cult that don't really think that they're a murderous cult uh and have had him on lockdown for like let's say a half a day maybe even a day of time while she ran to get uh reinforcements to help break him out during that time a number of things have happened and she's probably more than likely about to make some very questionable choices about whether she's come to save him or have to be saved from him Interesting. We will see, I suppose, when it comes to that. Louise, welcome back. Would you like to talk a little bit about everything that you do in the world and the character that you'll be playing tonight? Uh, sure. Um, I guess it, it, it's, it, you know, I don't know, feel compelled to point out that um, Marquia was just talking about Lampwick, which is who I play. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, I'm Luis Carrazzo. You can find me by my name on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm an actor, uh, a couple TV shows from last season that I was in, uh, SWAT, NCIS LA, um, Of Hearts and Castles is a short film that's doing this festival circuit um, that there's a trailer for that you can watch. Um, and uh, uh, Young Lion of the West is a film that's coming out real soon uh, that also has a trailer that you can watch uh, that uh, I'm working opposite of, for any of the Circle fans, anybody that watched The Circle, the guy who won the first season of The Circle, Joey, I'm in that movie with him. Um, and uh, if, uh, uh, I don't know if anyone has seen it, but I, uh, a new campaign that I am a part of just started to air, um, which is a Star Wars, uh, uh, it's a Disney resort uh, 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 for their Star Wars uh, themed uh, hotel that's going to be opening up in 2022 and I you know cared less about that than the fact that I got to basically be the central figure in this campaign and I'm a Jedi in it and it was so fun to do um, so uh, that's out there you may have uh, you may have already seen it and looked up the prices on that and then you know we'll had your head explode because it's pretty expensive but um, I'm playing Lampwick <laughs> um, and Lampwick is, uh, um, has been spending some time out of, out of necessity. See, the thing that I feel like I should explain was that Lampwick was put between a rock and a hard place when he was captured by the shepherds. And as he has resorted to time and time again, pre-apocalypse and ever since, he did whatever it is that he felt like he needed to do to convince the other people to let him live another day. So in the beginning, uh, he tactically used this um, interest in the shepherds um, by immediately singing the infamous shepherd song right back to his, capper, his captors. And using that moment, uh, well, that moment kind of avalanched into him sort of joining the shepherds and seeing them in a way that he hadn't been able to see them up until then, um, and noticing how they are with the Romeros, which is different from how any other groups of people have been towards them. Um, and there's been something about them that has been holding his interest in some way, shape, or form. And now we're here, and he, last episode was with, uh, um, 
uh, Granny Hodge, Mother Hodge, who we, who I recall her from way back when we first met her. Um, and uh, she uh, um, gave him a sort of kiss of some sort. Um, but he's still here and seems to have taken another step towards um, shepherd life, I guess. We'll see. We will indeed see. We have two special guests with us once more. Janelle, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about what you do across the internet and who you'll be playing tonight? Hello, everybody. My name is Janelle Santa Cruz, and that's where you can find me on all social medias, including Twitch here, which I am on daily on my channel or on Andy Campbell GG's channel. And we've been playing a lot of magic lately. I have um, been playing as Chatterfang. Squirrel General, um, and that's been a ton of fun. I've also uh, just built a Volo deck, and so tonight will be uh, the premiere of the new deck. Tonight, uh, I will be playing um, a, a game of Commander. We do that almost, uh, we, yeah, we do that all, uh, just about every day of the week lately, and so we'll be doing that. And also, also, um, if you guys uh, uh, like uh, Evil Dead, um, we might have an announcement coming up about a certain video game um, that comes out in February, and so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following on Twitter for all of them updates. Also, Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb is who I'm playing and she's a wild child. And she was, uh, she's not known her parents. She was raised pretty much by a whole group of other wild children, including a guy named Monday. And as somebody who has really sort of relied on herself, um, she's starting to realize the value from other people and uh, is beginning to open up upon like meeting Achira and Marcus has sort of been forced into the, kind of this guardian role um, because you know she's sort of uh, uh, hectic and and running around and I, as a police officer I, I I he's you know I feel like I can trust him and um, you know it may lead to some trouble and Achira has actually just taught Cherry Bomb how to make uh, Molotov cocktails which is uh, fitting for Cherry Bomb's name. Um, so we'll see what gets done. She's along for the ride, and uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Hopefully she doesn't die. Hopefully not. Uh, you are carrying a backpack full of explosives, though. We'll see how that goes. Last but not least, Omega, welcome back. Would you like to talk a little bit about all of the wonderful things that you do on the internet and who you'll be playing tonight? Of course. Hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, Critical Bard across all social media channels. I am an actor, uh, vocalist, uh, hot mess incarnate. I am a full time Twitch streamer uh, uh, playing all the things like Dead by Daylight and and Fortnite and anything else, honestly. Makeup artist, jack of all trades. I do too much. Uh, you can catch me many places. Uh, check my socials to, to get every single last thing I'm doing. Uh, specifically, you can catch me and Michelle on Thursday at 4.30 Pacific uh, PM Pacific uh, on youtube.com slash one bookshelf for Pretty Little Liches, which is a uh, uh, level 20 D&D uh, &D, uh, mini campaign using content from the DM skill. Very, very excited about that. It's a really good group. Uh, you can find me on Fridays uh, over on Rock Punch ATL for Tampa, which is a dandy campaign using the Islands of Sina Una campaign setting, which is inspired by pre-colonial Filipino culture. You can catch me on Mondays during a Curse of Strahd campaign with Realmsmith. Catch me on Saturdays on my channel for Let's Get Wild Mount uh, using Critical Role's Wild Mount setting. Uh, and on Sundays, you can catch me as the DM for Dungeons and Durags, which is an all black DD campaign over on twitch.tv slash I Need Diverse Games, INDG. Anything else? Nope, can't think of anything right now. Just look at my socials. Um, today, I am playing Marcus Greaves, the old man who has seen a lot but still has a heart of gold. Uh, he was a cop back in the day before the apocalypse happened. He had a lover. Um, who he hasn't really gotten over, who left uh, abruptly uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and that person might be on this call right now. Um, he has learned to get by using the skills that he had um, in the past, but never forgetting who he is and who he's going to be. And that's someone who strives to do good um, and not let this world bring him to the point that everyone else has gotten. But that doesn't make him um naive to the world he is a realist uh, he knows 
when too far is already a problem. Uh, as we saw last uh, week when he knew that a certain individual was most likely going to call attention to their position, uh, making things a lot harder. So after thanking him for his service, he snapped his neck. Oops. Uh, but yeah, that's who Marcus is. And I'm very excited to see uh, if this fated reunion happens. We're very glad that you're all here. And we thank you for your time. It is an honor for you to be here with us. And we are very, very appreciative of your time. Additionally, we wish to thank, thank each and every one of you for supporting Rag and Bone over these past few months. We are on our 44th session. This is our 44th recording. And we couldn't have done that without all of your support. We do have a few special announcements and a little bit of a gift if you would like to see it as such. Every single month on Drive Through RPG, you can find our free content Friday offering. If you haven't already, you can go to Drive Through RPG and you can download Rag and Bone Ground Zero and other supplements that will give you a very intimate introduction into the world of this campaign. Additionally, we are going to be doing a live show at Gen Con this year. We will be on the Gen Con uh, channel streaming live from Indianapolis. It will be happening on Thursday of Gen Con um, and we will be there uh, with more announcements on our social media. So if you have any questions about when and where you, you're going to be able to find us, Rag and Bone is going to have a very special session that you're not going to want to miss uh, that is going to involve a lot of special guests and a very particular situation that is going to affect everything this point going forward. So we are very excited to let you know that that is happening. All you have to do is keep track of us through all of our various social media accounts, and you're going to find out all about that as we get closer. Also, thanks to your support, every single player here will be receiving four additional competency points. Each one of our thresholds is laid bare to you now on the screen and if we reach those every single week these survivors are going to have the crucial support that they are going to need to be able to move forward but now it's time to move forward it's getting very dark and the road is long we should get moving before it's too late we'll be right back The world ended on May 29th, 1995. The sky fell and the dead would not die. Civilization quickly collapsed and the sickness spread like lightning to even the most remote reaches of the world. They called it many things, but it simply started out as another round of the flu. It became something far, far worse. H195 commonly called the Legacy or the Reaper's Kiss. 
was even deadlier once it had passed through society, working its way like a fetid rot through all of our world. At first, it seemed as if no one was immune to the airborne strain. Eventually, it appeared that 0.01% of the population had a natural immunity. However, even those lucky souls couldn't withstand a concentrated introduction of the virus through a bite or a deep scratch or blood on blood contact. The end of days were like wildfire and throughout the world, people sought security and sanctuary, but there was none to be had. Entire cities burned to the ground. The streets were flooded with those that had passed away brought back to some horrible mockery of life as they sought the living. A destructive tide that couldn't be turned. Some, however, miraculously survived and for the next 25 years, life has struggled forward. The world now is a fractured place. Very little remains. But some seek to make civilization anew. Settlements and outposts have risen across what was once known as the Midwestern United States. Rag and bone merchants travel the lines between these places, delivering food, water, medical supplies, and more to the beleaguered people of these lands. The Ender's Line uses railway tracks to do that work. They are a lifeline in a world that now belongs entirely to the dead. Faith, you have slaughtered so many. There is a trail of blood that has followed you throughout every of these ramshackle tunnels, these small cabins, these caves that have been hand dug into the earth, the tanning pits filled with their filth, their urine, the blood of others, the butcher poles that they've used to hang their meat from on giant hooks and chains, human and animal alike, pig and person dangling there, covered in flies. The place reeks, it smelled of death before you got here, but now it's covered in a thick miasma of smoke. It's burning. The Citadel, they arrived, and they arrived with great strength. Automatic weapon fire, Mortar shelling. Grenades. Tear gas. These people didn't stand a chance. When the collective force of your unit landed, the death simply couldn't be stopped. They were resourceful. There were plenty of traps, rusted old hunter's implements that had been placed throughout the woods here. Easy enough, they can't stop a tank. The dogs, wolves they've used died quickly. The people eventually began running, trying to escape. Thankfully, Rowan's unit had already made their way to their only avenue that you had left them. And they were funneled into a crossfire that they couldn't escape. All that was left was to clear the tunnels. And so you, Riggs, and a number of the more elite soldiers of the Citadel have made your way down here into these pits where these cannibals had been living building a world of their own, one filled with death and destruction. 
now you have shown them what that really means. Only one of them has said anything to you at all. Many of the other bodies, upon examining them, you have discovered that their tongues have been removed. Ragged scars inside of their mouths, whether of their own choice or a forced alteration, you can't say. But you know that these people are not one that would waste me. There is only one door that you've not passed through. Riggs, having discovered the same room that you and Achira had found not so long ago, has his soldiers clearing it out, pulling those resources for the Citadel. You, two of your soldiers, stand before the wooden door. There's a heavy chain, rusted, that has been wrapped around two metal rings into the stone of the wall. There's a large iron padlock, crudely made. On the front of the door, leather, human leather, a face has been nailed. What do you do? I take my axe out and use the handle of it, which I hope is metal, to sort of put it in the chains and twist it till it breaks the chains off. You have a citadel forged axe, is that correct? Yes. It is in fact made of metal. It is wrapped in uh, fine black leathers. However, the shaft of the axe itself is cast steel. You place it into the chain and you begin twisting it. It bends and after some effort, it breaks. The door swings open. It's dark and it stinks. Flies burst out, fill the air for a moment. You feel your stomach turn and I need you to make an endurance check. Two degrees of success, you do not wretch. Smell while it threatens to knock you off of your feet. Doesn't win the day here. You remain standing. It's a putrid smell, it's human filth. There are steps crudely carved into the dirt ground. They lead down about five or ten feet into what looks like a cellar. What do you do? I send one of the uh, Citadel soldiers that is with me down instead of me. <laughs> the soldier nods command or nods back to you at your command and uh, flips on a, a large battery operated flashlight that is homemade. Uh, and it's light flickers and he holds it in front of him and pulls out a pistol covering himself as he begins walking down the steps quietly he looks back to you and the other soldier nods and keeps moving he disappears you hear something <laughs> Lieutenant, you're gonna wanna come look at this. What is it now? <clears throat> All right, let's go. I you bring you the soldier, soldier with me. Yeah, you begin moving down. The soldier's covering you as you begin making your way down the steps into the cellar. The smell here is even worse, but you manage to stomach it as you continue to pass deeper and deeper into this hole. The room itself is not very large. 
but there are five bodies hanging on the wall and from the ceiling here. There are piles of backpacks and clothing and boots on one side, and you see corpses that have been mostly stripped of their skin hanging here. There is one person who's alive, though. His left arm is gone, as is his right foot. Both have been crudely sutured. A terrified looking man, probably in his mid 40s, gray hair, a beard glasses that have been horribly broken and and repaired, but other than that and the shreds that he wears around his waist, he's completely naked. He's gagged. A strip of leather stuck into his mouth. The soldier stands shining a light onto this figure. What do you do? Take the gag off the old man. See, uh, see what he's seen. Oh, help! Help me! You, you, you gotta get me out of here. I'll do, I'll do whatever you need. I just, I, I got information, and I haven't been here too long. It's the, the, the monsters. And... Well, the monsters are the ones you're talking about. Are they're gone? You don't have to be afraid of them anymore. What you do have to be afraid of, maybe, is me. Where are you from? You're Citadel, right? That's right. Yeah, I can tell from from, from the markings. I I, I got no beef with the Citadel. Where are you from? Uh, Look, I'm not from anywhere. I just travel. I'm I'm rag and bone. The name's Betamax. You could just call me Max. Oh, the rag and bone, huh? Can't get rid of you. Yeah, look, they, uh, they ate my fucking arm, and they fed my fucking foot to the dog, so I ain't having a good day here. We've all had a really bad fucking week. All right. Well, you said you have information. Why don't you let me know what it is, and uh, I'll decide if it's good enough for us. He's desperate, you can tell from his face, but he's judging you, weighing you right now. You can make either an intimidation or persuade. I'll do intimidation. I'm gonna give you a single success initially, given his situation and the fact that you are his only hope right now. You have two soldiers standing behind you with (laughs) weapons. That's incredibly bad. Uh, however, you have uh, five <laughs> degrees of failure on this roll. Do you wish to spend your competency here? So many. Um, but you I have get, like, four degrees of failure. I get one for one free. one of them immediately is removed. Um, I'll make it just like not catastrophic. Uh, so one, two, three. I'll throw a three in here. I uh-huh. just have one degree of failure. Okay, so then I need you to make a detect motives roll as soon as he starts to talk. Okay. Look, um... I can help you out. I know where there's a lot of good stashes. Uh, we've been working this area now for quite a while. You have two degrees of failure on your detect motives. Do you wish to keep those? Oh, it's so early in the game. Uh, I'm gonna spend, uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend three and get one degree of success. God damn it. You think he's full of shit and he has more information than he's giving you. The idea that he's just got a few stashes isn't worth anything to you. So I could take you any to the stashes once we get out of here, and you can take whatever you want. Look, I, I just, I just want to live. All right. Listen, Max. We all want to fucking live. Some of us ain't so lucky. I ran out, ran uh, to a lot of your friends out there, Rag and Bone. You're all looking for something else, aren't you? Something that's not in here has to do with your buddy what's his name blockbuster remember him the fuck do you know that where'd you hear that name 
I got a lot of friends. Just left the group, actually. We're traveling together. Maybe we're not best friends, but we certainly helped each other get away from here. So, look. If you You're want some help, with Rag and Bone. I sure it was, and it was super annoying. And not, I. Why would I lie about that? But I know you want to get out of here. We've cleared the way. I have no reason to keep you here. But you're probably not going to make it very far without our help. What's your name? They call me Faith. Your name is Faith. Your name is Max, so what? No, I mean, I've heard your name. You're the one they call Baby Faith. Yeah. Okay, that's diminutive, but, you know, maybe somebody at some point has done that. Yeah, there's stories on the road. You don't take any shit from anybody, do you? Guess not. Look, Faith, if I can call you Faith, I respect that. I'll lie all the bullshit to the side. I'm gonna shoot straight, and you're gonna let me out of here. And I'm gonna be useful to you. Fuck the rag and bone. Fuck the Ender's line. Fuck all the cowards that left me here to die. You saved me. I'm your soldier. And I may be down a foot and an arm, but what I can do, I don't need two hands to do. I know their technology. I can open doors for you. That's why Kusanagi called me out here. So the Rag and Bone called you out here to help them. No, they, they did not. You. I did not say that, Faith. I said Kusanagi did. Are you two running some sort of side thing? Yeah, fuck him. He left me here to die. So I think our arrangement is dissolved. I was a compatriot of Kusanagi's. This motherfucker left me in the wind. I'm gonna hang him out to dry. I was supposed to meet him out here three days ago. He gave me these coordinates. He had some scam going with all of you. Your faith, you were there. He mentioned he was fucking over the Citadel too. Fucking over everyone. He knew where Blockbuster's complex was. Wherever wherever he is, he's got the key. You know what that is, right? That place, that thing that Blockbuster was willing to die for? Maybe I have an idea. It's the fucking promised land. If you run in the same circles that I do with the tape traders, you know that Blockbuster had it all. Like clearing out entire hospitals of medical gear. Weaponry you couldn't even think of. Even the Citadel couldn't even think of. It was a complex. He was an archivist and he was real fucking good. And he was ruthless. And he took all the things that the old world had and he brought them together in a place where they could be protected. Underground. See, no one knew. And Blockbuster was crazy as a bat, but let me tell you what. He wasn't a fucking fool. He had fucked over the radios. He was scamming you all, making you think that there was some sort of problem. But he knew, and he was also making radio contact with us. There's other tape traders out there working for him. They were protecting his ass, making sure that he was okay, but something went real wrong out here and I now know what that something was. As soon as you got close enough, he was gonna ditch you. And then me and a few others, we were gonna help him crack the place. Apparently, and if you know the rumors or the legends, then you know that it's like, do you know what Fort Knox is? Nah, Fork. you're too young. Yeah, you're too fucking young. Fucking afters. Look, I've got all my fucking limbs, don't I? Dumb yeah, shit. you do. You fucking do. Congratulations. 
Look, Blockbuster added some creative additions to the place. You can't just walk in, even if you could find it. But I saw something. I got it on tape. They didn't know I was out here. It was you and the rest of that crew. I saw you. Yeah, I remember you now. My camcorder. Those fucking cannibals took it, but it's right over there in that pile. They threw it up against the wall. You get me out of here, I think I can get it working again, and I can show you what I saw. When is the footage from? Just before you got pulled in here? A couple days ago. Half a week, maybe. I don't... Like, maybe that? Half a week? Why the fuck were you filming us? (laughs) You don't get it. He's playing both sides. Hinders. Citadel. Fucking shepherds. Anyone. It doesn't fucking matter. The only thing that matters... It's Blockbuster's complex and getting to it. And not letting the Citadel or anyone else take anything from it. He couldn't do it on his own. I don't know that any of us could. So he hatched this plan, hoping to be able to use all you to be able to get what he wanted. It's as simple as that. You're a bunch of fools, but I can help you fix that. You see some real funny shit, you know that? Yeah, I'm a funny fucking guy. I used to be a comedian. I don't know what that is. All right. You know what? I'm in need of a new pet project. Let's just say. Finished my old one. Looking pretty good out there. If we think you're going to cross us even for a minute, I will rip the rest of your fucking limbs off and leave you here to die. Leave you anywhere. Hang up a tree, throw into a bunch of Romeros, whatever. I don't give a shit. You don't cross us. There's a lot of us. Why don't you? Look, uh, Faith, I'm kind of done here. So you let me out, you ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm done with all that shit. I'll be a soldier. I meant that. You'll be able to trust me. Well. Time was hell. What the hell? Soldier, grab this man. Let's get him upstairs. His name's Max. We're gonna have a little meeting with the rest of the crew. You got maybe it, Lieutenant. We're gonna. Maybe we're gonna be good friends. He breaks you loose. All right, and he steps forward. Max is freed from his chains. He's pulled up, carried up by the soldiers. You stop, and he points to the pile. that That's my shit right there. Some of my clothes, too. I mean, come on. I, I could use a little dignity. Yeah, yeah. Plus, we need your tape. I instruct another soldier to go grab it and get so him dressed. The get his soldier things. grabs it. They get him dressed. You start walking up the steps, and then standing at the very top is Riggs. You smell a cigar first, and then you see him. He's scratching his beard, and he's looking down, and he's got a spray of blood across his face. And then you see his other hand, which is holding a severed head. New toy? Trophies, you know? We oh, gotta yeah. let them know. Well, I feel like they're all dead now, so. They're very dead. Yeah. But any other assholes that come through here, they're gonna know what we did. Sure. Uh, found something fun? All right, then, Lieutenant Faith. Why don't you show me what you found? Right this way. And uh, tell him about what Max told us. Um, Great. Sorry, sad sack of shit. Yeah. We'll add it to the pile, I guess. Yeah, but I know Rowan and everyone is looking for all the stuff that he was talking about. If there's supplies, we could use it too. Why should fucking Rag and Bow get it? Yeah, uh, hey, uh, sorry. Thank you, sir, for saving my life. Uh, look, I, uh, 
he's obviously very nervous because this soldier is carrying a severed head, but he looks at you and then looks back. Uh, yeah, I, I think I could be a use if y'all shut up. I don't care. Lieutenant, you're keeping this one alive? For now, I need something to keep my mind occupied. But he has a tape of us, apparently. He says something weird on it. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll show it to you, Faith. Uh, you, you're gonna wanna see it first. What does that fucking mean? I don't fucking know. I'm fucking curious now. What do you have? Yeah, it's it's a it's a tape. Um, Faith, make a detect motives check, please. Okay. One degree of failure. Do you want to hang on to that? Am I in the woods yet, or am I still in a tunnel? In fact, you are in the woods. Hell yeah! I used two of those points and make that a one degree of success. All right. Um, so one degree of success, you see as Riggs turns back to you. Beta Max is shaking his head. His eyes are wide. He's trying to warn you of something, but you don't know exactly what. All right, Riggs, let's, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, you know what? Give me a minute. I'm going to look through this stuff down here. See if, uh, I don't know, uh, see if any Bomar stuff down here. He was held here for a while. Um, but I think we're done. Just get this weirdo out of here and we'll discuss all this up top. I want to get out of these caves. Yeah, sure. I don't give a fuck. And he uh, puts his cigar out on this guy's shoulder and walks out up the steps. You're down there alone. He's cursing as he's wiping the ash off. What a fucking asshole. Yeah, keep your fucking mouth. Just keep your mouth shut around him. I don't... What are you... What What? don't you want him to see on that tape? Just tell me. We don't have time. I'll go fucking find a TV and do all this. Just tell me what's on the tape. No, I can play it off the camcorder. And oh. he picks up the camcorder and he's like le- leans up against the wall and he's sweating profusely. He's dressed now, but he's, he's like messing with it. He's pulling wires together and uh, he turns the eyepiece around so that you can press your face into it. Hold on. I think I got it. And he's rewinding, and you see if you press your eye against it. Do you? I do. You see a blur of black and white footage. It's trees, walking. You see locations. You see the cabin that was burnt to the ground from a distance. He stops it. It rewinds further. It turns into a blur. Rolling, jagged bars. And then it stops again and you see trees, but this time he zooms forward and you watch as the camera lens punches into the road, the road that leads to this cabin. You see the ATV covered in branches and leaves. He's pretty far away. He's hidden somewhere, but he's filming from a distance up high maybe in a tree. He moves it over. You see yourself. You're in the road. Then it moves and it zooms in on Camilla. Pregnant. Unconscious. In the road. He zooms back to you and then back out. He fast forwards again. There's a gunshot that you hear. Then there's movement. Whoever's holding the camcorder is running. Stops again. You're getting sick as the camera waves back and forth, looking for focus. And then you see Omar. standing over figure you can't see who gun is pointed down it punches in enough for you to see that he's 
furious, but there are tears rolling down his face. And then you watch him drop to the ground. Someone has shot him from behind. Your brother's body falls like a crumpled scarecrow. The figure holding the camera clearly knows that he's in too deep. You don't see who pulled the trigger, but it was a gun. And now the figure's running away through the woods and the camera footage becomes fuzzy. I didn't think you would want the rest of your soldiers to see that. If you're- What happened? What the fuck happened? He wasn't a Romero? What, what the fuck was happening? Who shot him? Look. I've given you everything I got. I told you I was your soldier. And I'm your soldier. Not the Citadels. There is something really fucked up going on. And we're gonna get to the bottom of it. You and me, or... I don't know, fucking without you, with you, I don't get shit. But I'm gonna find out what the hell happened to my brother, because that's not what I was told happened. I'm spending 50 risk. Fuck. Meanwhile... Lamplick. The floorboards outside in this shack. In this small, dull, and nearly lifeless survivor community. In the rain, as it patters down on the corrugated steel roof, you hear a creak of a floorboard. As you stand next to you, Mother Hodge, frail looking, withered and old, impossibly old for these horrible days, dressed in her perfect black garb, and you now next to her in yours. She looks to you. Your trial has arrived. Is our ritual done? For now. What can hurt me? You have been saved. Nothing, my child, will ever hurt you again. But you what can, you can be removed. This garden is poisonous and there are those that would seek to harm you. Bring her to us. Spread the truth. Spare no blasphemy or your wrath. And know that when you are hungry, she places her hand on your cheek and looks at you very much like a mother would a child. When you are hungry, we will provide you with sustenance and strength. When you are lost, we will find you. And when you feel alone, pray, and you will hear the song of the children of the valley. Thank you, Mother. I will make you proud. She pulls your head down 
to her height and she kisses your forehead. And she releases you. Outside the door, Marcus, Cherry Bomb, and Achira. This is the door that Robin indicated. You see the mark upon it. You're on the porch. That's it, isn't it? It is. I'm thinking, shoot everything that's in there except for Lampwick. You don't have to agree with me on that, but I know these people and I know what they have done. There was a previous member of my group, Sister Abigail, not with the shepherds. When she ran across the shepherds, she ended up a Romero, not only a Romero, this talking hybrid kind of Romero. I don't see any reason to keep any of them around. Hyper in which way? Hybrid as in it could talk and it stalked us. A talking scrub? It followed us into mines after Grey Ridge had been set on fire and was under siege by a zombie horde. All of that happened when the shepherds arrived at Grey Ridge. Well then yeah, we should get to shooting. And stabbing. And bombs. And bombs. And then I pull out one of my uh, one of my Molotov cocktails. I'm ready when you are. Just have to be mindful of Lampwick is in there. Jira. You say you had a friend who was turned into one of these things. Yes. Why? I would imagine because that's what they do. They like to turn the living into their pets, their plaything, this cult does this. I've also seen them talk to regular Romeros and get them to do their bidding. Lampwick was not able to do that yet, but I I don't know what might have happened to him in the time that I've been gone. And that's what I was uh, going to ask. Is there a possibility that In the time you've been gone, is that something that could have happened? I made a promise to Lampwick. I made a promise to him that as long as there was enough of him inside of whatever he might become, that I would keep him. And if there wasn't, that I would end him. And that's what it comes down to. There wasn't, from what I can, from what Juniper told me, there wasn't anything left in Sister Abigail, nothing. Seems fair to me. The deepest sigh escapes as he looks for it. 20 fucking years and this is what I come back to. And he cocks his gun, make sure everything's good. The the big old gun that he got. And um, you got two of them. Got two of them. Yeah. Um, And he begins to head inside, I guess. 
You're yeah, taking you're point. Taking, you're taking point. Mm -hmm. Are you being quiet until you reach the door? Yes. Well, as best, best as possible. Then make a stealth check for me. Everyone else, uh, are you falling in behind? Yes. Uh, so, Cherry, I, I draw both of my swords and then our, my daggers, and then I, I start to follow behind. Um, Achira, long gun. Achira has her long gun at the ready. Yeah. Right. And she's following, she's, uh, she's following in to cover the both of them. Might be close quarters, but are you lagging just a little behind? Let's say that when she gets, um, once the door is cleared, she's going to fall to a knee. Mm -hmm. um, to have a better perspective of the room and to not have to shoot over anybody's shoulders. Then I'd like for you to make a spot listen check, please. And question for my sake, we're, are we walking into a room or we're we walking into a building that has rooms? It's a building that has rooms. So you're currently on a porch of one of the larger ramshackle structures that has been built here. Gray Ridge... It's a very bedraggled place. It's a, a small little survivor community. It sits on the edge of what was once the 99 interstate near Altoona. It's a few days south of the Citadel, but the small little burg has been cobbled together with scraps and trash from the pre-fall world. It's surrounded by a tall wall. Rusted semi-trailers and vehicles are stacked one on top of the other to make this 30-foot tall ring around the, the small village. Dying vines and sickly-looking moss grow across every single side of every structure. You see old rusted metal and this sort of dead foliage everywhere. This building is about twice as large as the others. There's a porch, and you can tell from the way that the slanted corrugated steel roof is laid that there are many other rooms beyond it. Um, above you is the shadow, even though it's raining and gray and cold. It's, uh, there is like a, a very dull shadow of what was once an overpass. It's now a jagged concrete cliff um, that is just covered in, in these vines. And it spans about 50 feet over Sullivan Town. What kind of check did you want me to make? Um, so I would like for you to make a stealth check if you're following okay. in after mm -hmm. Marcus. Um, are we, by going into this building, stepping into a location hazard? You will be in a location hazard. However, you are not yet in a location hazard, okay. not this round. Okay. Uh, it, stepping inside will trigger that location hazard, though. I have no problems telling you that now. Marcus, you're silent. You have four degrees of success. That, that is a critical success. You get all the way up to the door. You can open the door if you like. You won't make a noise. Cherry Bomb, you currently have two degrees of failure. Is there anything you'd like to do to mitigate those failures? Hmm. I will use one point. Reducing it to one degree of failure. Mm -hmm. Marcus, you get to the door. You place your hand onto the latch and behind you you hear as the floorboard under cherry's foot creaks loudly i hold my hand up like immediately um firm fist saying stop and i don't say anything i guess step make quietly make a spot listen check marcus I got a uh, one degree of failure previously, but I'm, I would put uh, three competency points in that to make it two degrees of success. Um, I'm at the rear. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got a, uh, I've got everybody six. I can, um, sorry. What do you, what do you think, Omega? No, no, oh. go, go for it. What? I was just, I was just, I was just confused about things. I can use my recon gear for this. No, or mm. no? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I would say both of all of you are going in with gear ready you've, you've been yeah. tactically moving forward i almost always allow you to use whatever gear you might okay. have in those instances okay. so that, made, that makes it a plus three modifier okay yes so 
All right. Um, <laughs> so that's this four is how roll twenty does. Yeah. Omega. But I, I will say that's how she do. Yeah. Uh, Achira, you have you've turned your failure into a success. It's very quiet in Sullivan Town. It's raining. The mud here has turned into this thick, viscous swamp through the streets. It's very slow moving. None of the street has been disturbed since you arrived. You don't see anyone on the walls. Robin was the only person that you had found. Everything is very, very quiet, and it makes you uneasy. Yeah, um, I would have previously, and I, I believe we covered this, I would have previously let everybody know um, how many people I knew of mm-hmm. in Sullivan Town, which was that <clears throat> seven, which is now six, plus um, Sister Deidre, Granny Hodges, that that hybrid monster, uh, Lampwick mm-hmm. and Camilla. I'm... Until we go inside, I'm scanning everything around behind us, since I have two pairs of eyes looking into the structure. Marcus, do you want to let these four degrees of failure on your spot list and stand before you do anything else? Oh my gosh. So early. Ah, uh, I know. Um, Maybe, I mean. No, I'm gonna I'm a use. Uh, I'm gonna use three degrees just to make it one degree of failure. Three uh, points. Uh, I don't want to go too overboard. Oh God, that's not what to do. Um, Allow me to help you out. Spend one, removing the critical failure, making it three degrees of failure, which means that you certainly aren't going to be given any positive information, but you will just be oblivious. If you reduce it down to one degree of failure, it's not going to make as much of a difference and you will have wasted the additional ah. confidence. So what I'm get, what I guess heard is our DM just showed mercy in a game that is not designed to show mercy. Uh-huh. Savior. That's scary. <clears throat> Good to know. Cool. Yep. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. So you spend one degree of competency. Yep. Or one competency point and reduce it by one degree of failure, making it three degrees of failure. You simply don't hear anything over Cherry's just foot hitting that board and causing this horrendous loud pitch squeaking noise underneath the wet soggy floors and you um you see her face and you're just focused in on the situation there's nothing behind us i'm very certain of it we should continue forward i kind of push marcus forward yeah I will take a breath and start to walk. Lampwick, what do you do? Do do I hear anything? You don't hear anything. And is Sister Deidre in the room with me? And is Sister Deidre left long ago? It was just you and Mother Hodge. And Mother Hodge is left, or has she, has she remained? She is slowly making her way across the room to a door in the back. She's is there another? Here. Okay. <sighs> is there another door, or other, other than that one? There are two doors in the room. One that leads deeper into this building. One that leads outside. I. I'm going to, as as Mother Hodge goes through the door, I'm going to, I'm going to accompany her to the door, uh, like I, like I'm escorting her out. Um, and if she says nothing, um, I'm going to stay at the door and kind of protectively watch her as the door opens and she begins to pass through it she pays no mind to you she walks into the darkness of a hallway 
lights no torch, carries no lamp, simply steps into the dark. And you hear very quiet footfalls. She makes her way deeper and deeper down that hallway. What do you do? I turn around and the door opposite of this one that she just exited leads to the outside. That's correct. I want to go down the hall. Have I have I been in this hallway? Am I familiar with this building yet? You have no idea. There was simply the altar here. You were brought into this room and this room alone. This is where you prayed together. This is where you took your, as she referred to it, sacrament. I'm going to, from a distance, with the same protective kind of gaze, I'm moving forward and I'm noting the door, any doors that I see. You're stepping into the hallway. Mm -hmm. There are a number of doors, three, maybe four. Marcus, once again, your hand falls upon the handle. What do you do? I open the door as quietly as possible. The door quietly opens. It's dark inside. There are flickering candles. The cold, rainy wind from outside pushes its way in. You feel the pressure change, Lamprick, as the air shifts. Though you don't feel the chill, you do feel the breeze move past you quickly, and you see the flickering of the candles in the room behind you. I stop. Most of them blow out. Marcus, you see a stick and bone altar. Strange shapes lashed together with twine hung upon the wall in an enormous spiral. There's a figure standing in the hallway before you. In the darkness, you don't see any features. A man's form. And I knew that Lampwick was captured, so I would not assume this individual standing is them. What would you assume? It's up to you. The gun We're is going raised. to take a short break. We'll be ah, back in you... 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. Welcome back to Hunter's Entertainment on Twitch.tv. Marcus, the door is open. Small, filthy little shack in Sullivan Town is wide open to you. It's dark. Most of the candles extinguished when the burst of rainy wind pushed past you. There is some strange, twisted edifice hanging on the wall, an altar. Two small pillows in front of it to accommodate those who might kneel in prayer before it. The only other doorway here is open, leads into a hallway. You see the silhouette of a man. What do you do? Gun is in my hand. Um, it's not pointed up yet, but it is um, prepared to be at a moment's notice, but I have to honor who I'm playing. What does the body language of the individual standing there say to me? 
for all the tech motives. I don't want to add anything to this, no. Now you have three degrees of success. No, I don't. I got six degrees of success. <laughs> You have six degrees of success. It maxes out at five, but we'll call it six. Six in my spirit, okay? Mm, you have a critical success in this. Now, before you move any further, I wish to announce that you're in a location hazard. All of you. Thank Lampwick, you. what does your body language say in this moment. It's relaxed and intently, I mean, intently focused on what's ahead of me down the hall and not what's behind me in the room. Marcus, you sense calm, relaxed posture. This individual isn't threatened by your presence at all. Has he noticed that someone's entered the room? With five degrees of success, yes, you know that they're aware of you, that the door is open. Maybe not of you, because they've not looked back. There's no way that they could have seen you. Of course. But the breeze, the door open, the changing of light from the candles being blown out, you know that this person knows that you're here. My gun slowly raises. I am eyeing the back of their head and I barely miss. You are firing. I am not shot? firing. Hmm. Where is uh, Mother Hodge? The elderly woman has disappeared into the darkness ahead of you. You heard her footsteps at first. Now, you'd have to travel further down to find her. And I can't see because it's too dark. That's right. Hmm. I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to start to walk into the room. Before you do. Before they've moved and I'm looking. Mm -hmm. um, Where is Lampwick? First, you don't recognize this individual. Marcus, would you describe Sorry. yourself? Yeah. Um, before this individual, who well, I don't know yet, uh, stands about a six foot one. Uh, well, no, he's taller than that. Six foot three, two, something like that. Over six foot, um, somewhat broad, dark skinned man, hair, um, not much on his shot on the sides, seemingly shaved in some way, shape, or form, um, about of kinky uh, hair on the top. Uh, some of it's graying, a good chunk of it's graying now, but it's more of a salt and pepper look. Uh, there's age upon his face, but there's still a warmth. Wearing a uh, well, at this moment, um, you see firstly a tactical vest of some sorts um, that's underneath a a bigger coat, uh, longer coat, uh, you know, pants, shoes, boots. Uh, there is a I forget what type of gun is it. Am I, am I holding an AK or something? You have. You, well, there are two. There's one on your back yeah. and one in your hands. It's an AK though, right? AK-47. Yeah. I'm holding an AK in my hand. There's one on my back that's also a pistol holy, uh, holstered on my side. Um, 
the jacket slightly behind it just so it's easy access. Um, there's also a knife on the other. Um, yeah. Remembering that Lampwick is now wearing these black robes. Describe yourself, please, Lampwick. Uh, so I am in these black robes that are typical of some of the members of the shepherds. Uh, I'm uh, about six feet tall. Uh, Lampwick looks like someone who could have um, been uh, maybe a model. Uh, was attractive since when he was young and he knew it and he knew how to use it. How that's sort of manifested in the current time is a little bit different. He, he has a slender body of someone who, if you can look closely, if you could tell, you could tell used to be athletic, muscular. Um, and although his face is weathered like that of probably everybody else here, there's still something kind of ambiguous about his look. Um, he is still has dark brown hair, a beard, um, medium brown skin. Can't tell if he's a really weathered 28 year old or 55. And the two of you lock eyes. And if you've ever met someone that you've lost track of over a large number of years, there's unfamiliarity that slowly it thaws like ice. It melts, it dissipates into the wind round you. And in those flickering few remaining candles, the two of you come to know who you're looking at. I step forward. Lapwick. You could put the gun down, Marcus. Will you please put the gun down? It has not moved. I slowly step forward. The aim goes slightly higher. You look comfortable. Huh. Is that what this looks like? You look good. We <laughs> have some catching up to do, but this is not the time or place. Oh no, this is the perfect time. We're in danger here. We? Yes, we all are. I need to find the people that I came here with. To do what? To leave. Right now, we will be unharmed if we leave soon, and we should. By whose word? I suppose by the shepherds, and I don't know if I have much choice but to trust them. Like I don't have much choice but to trust you right now. Twenty years. Has it been? Twenty. Twenty years. Seven months. Eighteen days. I count. I see. 
20 years and nothing's changed. Then you need to look more closely because a lot has changed. I need to find my friends. I came here with two women. One is very pregnant. I need to, I need to find them and I need to leave. My eyes glance past him, looks around, listens, but I'm not actually doing like an active listening check. I'm just listening and thinking for a second. Where's your daughter? I take one step forward and don't lie. I don't lie anymore. My daughter's dead, Marcus. A group of very bad people found us and they killed her. And I couldn't do anything to stop them. How much do I believe him? Is there something I need to roll? I, I want to know how much I believe him. Oh, you're muted. Roll the technologies. I don't like just doing rolls or acts. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> That's five degrees of success before you add anything to it. Luis, the player. Mm -hmm. How much of that was true? You cannot lie. 100%. Total truth. The words within the words, though the sentence was true, do I still believe it was actually his daughter? He believed it was his daughter. He's grieving like a real father. Whether it was his daughter or not, as you suspect to be the case, at some point after he left you, she was no longer a prop. She wasn't a tool this, the face that you're looking at, as you've seen it before a thousand times in this world, is the face of a father who's lost so much and is devastated by that loss. And Lampwick is a good liar, maybe the best. But you know people, you might be the best at that. So I leave it to you. Then answer me this. We came here to find you. Apparently you had been captured. And now I walk through this door and you look like there's comfortability and then there's certainty. You seem certain in your position right now. And I need to know why. I know you more than anyone. You will do what you need to do to survive. And that means leave everything you care for. I'm sorry she died, but a part of me isn't sure if that wasn't part of a plan. Not my plan. Before either of you do anything else, I need to ask. Cherry Bomb, Achira, you're hearing voices. You hear everything that Marcus is saying very clearly. 
you can make a spot listen check and I will tell you whether or not you're hearing what Lampic is saying as the rain falls down around you. I need to hear all of this. Roll 20, please. Come on, roll 20, don't let us down. Don't let us down on this. You have three degrees of success, you hear everything. I I hear everything. I gotta hear this, please, roll 20. Every syllable. Okay, I got two degrees of success. I hear, I hear, I hear everything. You hear everything. Some of it's muddled. You certainly are further back. You have to lean forward, but you hear it. 20 years? Daughter, what? I, ne- I never knew this about Lampwick, but all of this, all of this is making so much sense. Do Every either of you do anything out there? Uh, um, I, I tug at Marcus. Uh, Achira is going to um, lightly press on Cherry Bomb's back to move inside so that she can close the door to the outside. Marcus, you are standing in the doorway. It's entirely up to you who enters. What do you do? You feel, you assume, Cherry Bomb pull at your jacket. We'll take a step inside. My eyes haven't left my place. Gun is still raised, correct? Lampwick, two figures enter. One of them you do not recognize. Uh, Cherry Bomb, would you please describe yourself? So uh, uh, I am standing there and I just have like dirt all over my face and just smeared makeup. Um, Cause again, she just like found a, a whatever the palette was that she found, you know, she just uses um, stuff that that she assumes it was worn in the 90s and uh hair there's it's it's just filthy there's just all kinds of leaves and everything in there and um and yeah whatever fashions that she believes were were in the 90s and then uh so i'm leaning forward and i'm 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 tugging on him uh, on in the back of his jacket and uh, i try to get a grip on it and then i as he steps forward it slips out of my hand and then i, I go marcus what were you doing And I'm stepping forward so they can get inside. I don't say anything, but it is clear that I'm giving them space to move in. Achira, you step in. Lampwick, you and Achira meet eyes. Ah, Achira, you, we have to leave. Where's Camilla? As far as I know where we left her. You're with Unless you know something else, Lampwick. I don't. Uh he's wearing the shepherd's clothing. Your clothes got wet? Tell me that's well, what happened. Well, that did happen. My clothes did get wet, but I had a conversation with the shepherds. A cheer. Are you better? I'm Are you better? I'm better. I am. I am. I'm better. And I would like to leave here, please. Come here. Let's get I, the hell out of here. I go to her, totally forgetting that Marcus is training his gun on me. Marcus? I heard better. What does better mean? Do you say that out loud as a character? I mm. do. I say, better how? I wasn't doing so hot. There was I'm better. I, I thought I was good with uh, medical equipment. I wasn't as good as I thought. So they were the only medics around. Nobody in Sullivan Town could help. help That's what I meant what? by better. He got caught in a trap when we were in the Marauders, and I, I, I just made it worse. Sometimes I'm better under pressure, but I wasn't then. But we Lampwick can talk about this, point, this. We can talk about this. Just grabs you, Achira, and just collapses into your arms, totally cutting you off and interrupting you, and oh. just. I want to get out of here, Achira. Please, I just, I've Marcus, had enough. Make a detect motives roll. Me? No, Marcus. 
Oh, God. How many successes critical. is that? Critical That's success. <laughs> so with five oh. degrees of success on detect motives. Damn. I'm going to tell you this much. They're lying to you. Achira's in on it. And this isn't what you thought it was. As they hug. You okay? The one standing before us knows more than any of you. That I don't like to be lied to. And he knows my capabilities, even though I try very hard to be good and do what's right. And I thought what I was doing was right. But I have been used many times. I have learned how not to be. But I still give the benefit of the doubt. So if someone wants to explain what the everlasting fuck is going on before I start shooting, you might want to start speaking. I, uh, um, I step away from Achira. I like let go of the embrace and I just kind of put my hand uh, on Achira's shoulder. Uh, as you do that, as uh, Marcus is finishing what he said, I start backing up behind Marcus and away from Achira, and then I pull out my my daggers again. I swear that I haven't technically lied to you. There is more information about what has happened to Lampwick, but I, please believe me when I say that now, now is not the best time to go into it. We can go into it outside of these walls, but inside Sullivan Town is not the place to be. And we have got to get away now. We do, Marcus, and- Everything else that I have said has been 100% the truth. It is just this one little thing that I will completely tell you once we are past these walls. Just because we're not ready to tell you doesn't mean that we're lying. I'm not ready to tell you something this personal. I don't even know who you are and you're, all I know is that you're a liar, okay? And you're lying to Marcus. You're lying uh, to all of us. I'm not, who are you? Who How did are you? Get you? Wrapped up in this? Apparently I'm who you're looking for. I turn around, I kick the door open. I walk out. Damn well, it. Would I kick the door open or would I pull it? I kick the door open. I go outside. The door flies off its hinges as it is strapped together with rope and twine. It breaks and you step outside as the rain drizzles down upon you. We're going to have to run. Make a spot listen check, everyone. No. I'm spending 100 risk. One degree of success for Marcus, one degree of success for Cherry Bomb. I'm bumping that to two degrees, just to be safe. Understood. Lampwick, that's one degree of failure. Do you wish <laughs> to have that ride? Uh, yeah. I'm All gonna right. not be paying attention. Ichiro, one degree of failure. Do you let it ride? Uh, I think it makes sense in this context to let this ride as much as that sucks. So be it. No, now I don't want to because of that tone of voice. Marcus, you're standing outside. It's quiet. After this many years, you don't know how this can still hurt, but it does. Even under that beard and 
the wrinkles. You know the face, his eyes. The time that the two of you spent together. The gentle words. You've questioned it all a thousand times. Time and time again, you've hoped that even 1% of whatever he said was true. And in this moment, as you stand out in the mud and the rain, in the middle of Sullivan Town, probably the worst place that you've ever been, you just aren't sure. And then you hear it. Slow rumble. The ground is shaking. It sounds like a tank. <gasps> Faith. Let's go back a little ways. You step up and out of the hole in the ground that you found Beta Max in. The soldiers are helping him. They fashioned a crutch using some of the old medical gear that they found. He's doing fairly well considering everything that he's been through. What do you do? I leave him. I move to go find Rowan. You start marching down the hallway the one that leads out. There are bodies everywhere, blood. This place was a charnel house before you stepped into it, but what you and Riggs and the other units did was brutal, but they deserved it. You're stalking through the halls. Riggs appears and throws his arm out into a casual lean, his cigar chomping into his mouth. The older man looks at you. His eyes are fairly stern, but there's a certain amount of pride in them. You gotta fucking be in your bonnet. You wanna talk about it? Nope, I'm good. Just looking for one. Seen her around? Know, hey, whoa. Lieutenant Faith. Or amigos now. Or simpatico. You and I, we need to communicate. So let's communicate. You good with that? Um, uh, sure. Could we do this later? I... Nope. We're doing it now. Step into my new office, please, Faith. What the fuck? Do you do as he says, or do you stalk away? I am just sort of, like, step halfway in where he's motioning. I'm trying to, like, get him to hurry up. He closes the door behind him. He takes a cigar, he draws heavily on it and blows this heavy, thick smelling, acrid smoke. He hand rolls these things. They're filthy and disgusting. But ever since you were a kid, you've known it as an indicator of when he was near. Whenever you and the other cadets wanted to misbehave, the easiest way to do so was to watch out for that smell. And make sure that if you got caught, you got caught by one of the lieutenants that was a little more lenient. He looks at you. Got an interesting radio transmission. Oh yeah, is it the rag and bone people? Because they are all up in our shit this week. You wanna to talk to me about anything, Faith? Anything you wanna tell me? You know, your old buddy Riggs. Mm, no. Uh. We just killed a whole town. It felt kind of okay. Uh, but I think we've got bigger fish to fry now. That was the highlight of my fucking month, but it's mm -hmm. only going to get better here on out. Are you certain there's nothing at all that you have that you want to get yeah, off Yeah, what are, what are you getting at, huh? What did, what, did you hear me say some tuck shit about you behind your back? Or what are you, what are you inching away out here? Roll of detect motives. Oh, boy. Two failures. Two degrees of failure. Do you wish to ride that out, or would you like to use some of your competency? I keep it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Anything going on with that freak downstairs? <sighs> yeah, he's real. Yeah, yeah, he's he's real weird. Uh, you know, it turns out he uh, he was uh, coming into that that territory around the same time we were, and um, I don't know. The timing's real fucking real fucking weird, but apparently it all has to do with Ragged Bone and uh, that that guy, that tall weird guy with the hair. Kusa... K- Karen? I don't know. Kusa fucking Nagi. Yeah, Anime so nerd. I don't know what that is, but anyway... I hated those fucking conventions. I got stationed at one one year, and I couldn't move through San Diego because of them all. You're just saying words that I don't never heard before. Yeah, I understand. I, you weren't around. Trust me, you didn't miss out on that part. Look, I thought we had an understanding. I thought you and I, over the years, yeah, we'd had our differences and I was a bit of a hard ass on you, but I'm proud of you. And you've really shown a lot of initiative. Hell, I see a lot of myself in you. Well, I sure hope I don't look like a gross, smelly old man, but... Yeah, see, that's what I'm fucking talking about. You're sharp. Got a smart mouth. Look. I'm gonna give you a pass on this one because I think you've been put up to it. Do you want to start talking to me about Camilla? Or should I? Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, Camilla, I, yeah, I just, we saw her in the woods and I don't know, I think she's dead somewhere. I don't fucking know. A lot of shit happened. She's not dead. Okay. She, she's she's in Sullivan Town. Great. Why don't you get her and marry her? The same Sullivan Town you and Rowan just came from. Same one we sent horses to. Is any of this ringing a bell? Yeah, Riggs, you know what? It, it doesn't even fucking matter. Yeah, she's there. We were there with her. Uh, I didn't really know what to do with this giant pregnant lady. We kind of left her there. We're, I was trying to get revenge for my dead fucking brother. I had shit to do, okay? This is like the least important part of my day right now. Are you fucking Hey, all me? right, you got revenge. I helped you to do it, remember? Rowan wasn't too keen on that, if you recall. I don't give a fuck what she wants. Maybe you should. I sent you... Rowan back to base. Fuck's sake. Her unit is out. You and I are going to take a ride. To where? We're going to go clean house. I have a radio contact and they've been real clear. I've got a lot of contacts. You know what? You know what? Let's fucking go. Uh, I can't talk to Rowan, so I need to go talk to some other bullshit people we left over there in Sullivan Town. And uh, you know what? I'm real fucking sick of this rag and bone, and I think it's time to fucking squash him once and for all. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, then we're gonna have to squash some of our own. You know that, right? Doesn't matter. None of this shit matters. You want to be a lieutenant. You have to make some hard choices. We've got a traitor. And I'm asking you square up. Are you with her? Or are you against her? Rowan. Yeah, fucking Rowan. Can you stop playing dumb with me? I know you ain't. Rowan knew. You both concealed it from me. And I'm asking you straight up. Which side of the tracks are you on? Are you Team Rowan, who's gonna get you killed? Or are you Team Riggs, who's gonna make you a certified motherfucking badass? I will tell you whose fucking side I am on. I... I am on my own! I leave. I try to leave. 
He lets you. You just smell that cigar smoke as you step out. A few hours pass. You do step outside. There are burning bodies everywhere that have been strung up. All of the buildings have been torn down. Animal carcasses lay out, lay out there on the uh, the dirt and the rain. The fires sizzle. Riggs was telling the truth. Rowan and her entire unit have gone back to the Citadel. Other armored vehicles in the tank are gearing up. Seems like Riggs has already rung the dinner bell. You can see that they're collecting resources that were left here. Flammable liquid. Barrels of it. It's all being loaded onto one of the vehicles. The soldiers salute you as you pass. What do you do? I go look for <clears throat> that uh, Betamax guy. He's smoking a hand-rolled cigarette, one that he got from one of the soldiers. He's shaking. One of the medical staff is looking at him. He's wrapped in a blanket. All right, weirdo. You said you're my soldier? It's time to fucking prove it. Let's go. All right. Yeah, I'll prove it. Whatever you need, boss. We are going to figure out what the fuck happened back there. Or we're going to kill everyone. I don't give a shit. Anyone who's in our fucking way is going to die. But I need some answers first. The closest people who have some answers for us apparently aren't you, because you don't know shit. You do have this video. Yeah. And I do know. Yeah. Yeah. And I do know that Achira and that fucking weird smooth talker Lampwick, they were there when he died on the other side of that fucking tree. They know something I don't. So let's go take a trip. You and me. Maybe everyone else, everyone else is coming, but fuck them. All um, right. Do you commandeer a vehicle? That's what I want to do. All right. Um, you grab one of the ATVs. It's actually the Rattler. You can take the Rattler, and uh, it is, uh, it's been gassed up and repaired. There's biodiesel on the back to get you pretty far. Equipment, food, water, some heavy machinery, some guns, uh, a lot of ammunition. Wow. I think was that chat. Thank you, chat. <laughs> um, all right. I want to just, I'm not waiting for anything. I, even though the rest of the Citadel is going, I'm just gonna, we're gonna carve our own path out to Sullivan Town. Uh, cause I need to get some answers from a couple of people. It is my pleasure to ask you for a navigation check. Okay. In the front seat, uh, Beta Max sits and actually starts to work on your radio. He's adding components and moving things around. Uh, you have no idea, you leave, you leave, but you're so pissed that you are misreading the map. Mm. Uh, Betamax, however, looks at you and then looks down. Uh, look, boss, you, you're going the wrong way. This is going to take us three hours. You got to turn off here on the main road, back off of these mountains and head down towards, well, the okay, freeways. Okay, 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 okay. Just, just, let's just, let's just go, let's just go, let's just go. I Who set up your radios in this piece of shit? This is horrible fucking work. I could have done better in my fucking sleep. I, I have know. one arm and I'm going to make this better. Cool. Great. Do you, yeah, just whatever project you want to do. It ain't a project. It's going to give us long range communication. Who do you think we want to talk to? I got friends. And they're going to be as pissed at Kusanagi and these dumbasses as you and I are. Did you hear about what happened over at Grey Ridge? The whole thing got set on fire somehow? Yeah, a and bunch of these assholes. Yeah. yeah, they caused the whole thing to collapse. Only thing is, there's still some of them out there. And they're uh, paying good money to militarize against them. 
to make sure that their <laughs> trade routes fall apart. You say you hate them, you want to make it all fall apart. Well, might as well get our goods while we're doing it so we can do more damage. I mean, it only makes sense, right? You know what? Why fucking not? It's all gonna burn. I like the way you think, boss. Lampwick. What are you doing? It's just at that side. And uh, I think uh, the three of us might still be in. I, I kind of hang back with a cheer for a second. Uh, and I just look at her again and I say, we got to get Camilla and we got to get out of here. Did we hear... Th- a, we didn't hear a rumbling, though, did we? No, you two are oblivious. Look, I, I... I will put this out there at this point. Maybe we need a bigger force of people to get Camilla. I think I can talk to Marcus. I know he is angry towards me. Uh, I'm sure you gathered we... Yeah, no history. shit, he's angry. You're a liar. It's... About some things, but surely nothing very yeah. important, Achira says unironically. <laughs> Look, relationships come and go and they end and people end on less than good terms sometimes. People leave and people get hurt. It's what happens. I was young. It was 20 years ago. Let's not make this into a soap opera. We can talk about it like adults. Hash it out and then get back to doing what we need to do, which is stay alive. If we don't have you and Marcus to help us with Camilla, we will have to leave her here and try try to come back with somebody else some other time. That's a pregnant woman that you'll leave to die. She's pregnant? Yep. And she's missing an arm because uh, she was attacked by the marauders with a bone marrow knife. It infected her quicker than anything I've seen before, but we had to. she's better now. You know, somewhat. Cherry bomb. You've delivered three babies in the water. You know it well. It's not easy. A lot of the Echoes, they always freak out when they find out they're with child, but plenty of people have been doing what nature always intended to be able to reproduce children. It still happens out here. And you and some of the other wild ones, it's part of what you've done for the Ender's line in the past. You've been able to help serve as a midwife at least that's what they call it. You just call it helping to deliver to children, bring them into the world. Fine. Look, Marcus! Cherry, Cherry, wait. I know he's pissed at me, but we have to be on the same page. And if you can help us just get along enough to survive. I'm telling you, we will have our moment and we will have it out, but now is not the time. And you know that. You hear Cherry Bomb call to you, Marcus. You're standing out in the rain. You hear the rumbling. Before I respond, what I don't, do I see anything? I you just hear see, it. You don't see anything. There's a uh, very thick black plume that stops the far fires on the southern end of Sullivan Town have been put out that black smoke is no longer signaling into the air but other than that in the distance up to the opposite side towards the north gate you hear rumbling Does it sound like the rumbling? I'm just taking a second. 
Does it sound like the rumbling is slowly getting louder, or does it seem like a low growl? Oh, it's getting louder. Something's coming Something's closer. Something's coming. We have a problem. Is it the problem? hybrid? Is it the uh, hybrid Romero? I'll, I'll, go, I'll go outside. I was gonna say, he doesn't respond. If it was a Romero, you, I think you know by now yeah. he would have started shooting by now. <laughs> yeah, I, I say, I'm going to run out there because he says, as soon as he says, and then I said, problem. And then I look at Lampwick and I say, there is no page. Okay. And we're certainly on the, not on the same one. And then I run out. Um, uh, to Marcus. You see Marcus standing there. Uh, Cherry Bomb, make a detect motives for okay. me. The skill is getting a lot of exercise today. It really is. Uh, oh, wait, I'm missing it. Where is it at? Y'all, where is the detect motives at? I just had it. It's right under command, it's under trained skills. On the oh, left I see it. column. I, yeah. I see it now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. One degree of failure. Do you wish to write it out? I will use two points. All right. Marcus, without saying too much, can you describe the emotion in your face? Hmm. Betrayal, acceptance, focus. In that order. You think he's going to be okay, Jerry, and that he's very strong, but you sense all of those things. Okay. Something's coming. I don't so, know what, but I don't see it yet. As he says that, I... I... I, um, as I sense that, I just, I sort of just pat him on the back. Like, I, I understand. And even though I'm hearing what he's saying currently, I just, am like, as I'm taking that part of the message in, I'm, I'm also just putting my hand on there, on, on his back, just. Are you said it's coming from the north. Um, is there any, we haven't seen anybody else out, so I'm wondering if there's a, any space space we can get to to like not just be out in the open but that's also not the place we just came from because no well there are buildings and there are roads this place is a a rat's warren of streets you could move down alleyways and while the village isn't very large there are plenty of places to hide or get lost in um i will turn around and look at the door i don't know if the other two are coming yet I'm out there. I the walk out. The chair is out there. Yeah. You're all together then. Would, would, since we're outside, would we hear the rumble of this approaching? You all very clearly hear the rumble of a tank now. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Chira and Lampwick have been here before uh, right. in Grey Ridge when uh, a tank arrived. Um, a Chira is, there's going to be a type of fright that comes over her face. Uh, she's going to look over at Cherry and Marcus. The only people that I've seen have tanks is Citadel. And Citadel with a tank is not anywhere that you want to be. Then we need to go. Uh, I'm going to start heading straight right after that, right where I last le uh, knew Camilla was. Then let's go. And I start beelining right where we left her. Do you all follow? Achira looks over at Cherry and Marcus. I swear it is just one thing and I will tell you after we're outside these walls. And then she follows Lampwick. And then I look, I look over at Marcus. What do I see? Betrayal, acceptance, focus. And he continues with them. I follow, kind of like, just sad for him. Ugh. You're quick. Are you quiet? 
Achira would try to be as stealthy as possible, even if she has to separ separate herself from the group to travel alongside. Hmm. At this point, we know something's coming. I don't. To him, I don't think it's about being quiet. It's about being quick and fast. So by the time we get there, nothing sees us. Mm -hmm. It is it's a like, choice. Yeah. Quick is quick. Quiet is slow. Quick. Is there a medium? <laughs> I I will there be quick. Is. I'll be quick. I'm quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll I will take medium. after Marcus. I'll right. be medium to help cover. So then Achira is taking up the rear, falling behind from the rest of you as you rush through towards where Lampwick is leading you. Achira, go ahead and make a spot listen check. Mm, that changes not things. A, not um, a stealth? Seeing Achira pull back, mm -hmm. I look at Cherry and I say, keep going. I'm not letting a tear out of my sight. Okay, okay. So it means I'm I'm slowing down. Just and then because I, of yeah, it. I start chasing after Lampwick. Um. Lampwick and Cherry Bomb run through the muddy alleyways of Sullivan Town, and while both Marcus and Achira do also move forward, you slow your pace so that you can both be more quiet. You can both make stealth checks, but I need you both to also make a spot listen check. So we'll do both, okay. So first is stealth. It's four degrees of failure. Uh, no. Chira, that's one degree of failure. She's a little off her game tonight, but maybe this will make up for it. Two degrees of success on your spot list in Marcus. Ooh. Four degrees of success on your spot list in Chira. So I'm, do you wish to ride out your stealth rolls? Is there any way that I can use one of my spot listens to go into my stealth to at least no, watch that? All right. Two separate rolls. I'm I'm uh, going to I'm going to keep my stealth because I think with that spot listen she's going to sacrifice some of her stealth for it. I'm going to make that 3 degrees instead of 4 so it's just not as rough. So you're removing the critical failure. I'm removing the critical it. failure from it. He's not he sacrificed most of his stealth to just come back a little bit. How many competency points do you have remaining? A good chunk. A good chunk. I'll make note. I gotta remember that. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. a good response. Yeah. No, I, it I, is. I, I would be like, barely enough. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> um. You don't want to know what those sorts of responses do to my risk pool, but yes, it's very clever. <laughs> <laughs> you move forward. You're not exactly quiet, but both of you hear something. The rumble. But now, a strange electronic clicking noise. What do you do? It's coming from one of the towers, one of the watchtowers. Does it sound uh, like a familiar sound? Does it sound like someone on a radio or does it sound like something else? Because I, I have four degrees of success for this. Sounds like an old speaker. Feedback from an old speaker. With four degrees of success, there's more than one of them. The other one is pretty faint. It's also coming from one of the towers. Um, Achira is going to uh, whisper over to Marcus. There's more than one. I hear another one in the distance. It's not just this one. You said feedback. Um... Does that seem like something is now messing with systems? Or is something trying to actively contact? Because I'm going to have you make a digital systems roll. <laughs> digital, digital, get down. And digital, get down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cool beans. Um, I can't believe that's, that's even what a I say. roll. <laughs> uh, I was there when that 
phrase was coined. Oh, um, one degree of failure. You have I'm no turning, idea. It I'm turning like that feedback. into a success. Oh, you are. So you're going to spend two two competency yep. points out of your undisclosed amount of remaining yes. competency. All right. So with your single degree of success, you believe that it's a radio connecting to a speaker. It's the sound of a radio connecting to speakers. The sort of feedback that occurs when those two audio sources are patched together. Let me know if you say that out loud. Sorry, a radio is connecting to a speaker. Something's trying to be broadcasted. Um, he says, something's trying to be heard. It's connecting a radio of some sort. I know where the radio is. They've only got one in this entire town and I used it earlier to contact 10-4 and get all of you to help me. That sounds like that's where we need to go. Do the two of you split away from Lampwick and Cherry Bomb? I, I will not leave Cherry Bomb with Lampwick. Achira, do you split away alone? Damn it. I know where it is if we hear anything further from the radios. But Lampwick and Camilla are going to need the help. Achira continues forward with Marcus. She's not going to leave Marcus with Lampwick. Marcus and Cherry Bomb with Lampwick. <laughs> so the two of you move down the street towards the others. We've got a game of football. <laughs> Lampwick and Cherry Bomb. You're running through the mud covered streets of Sullivan Town. The rain still drizzles around you. This place is miserable as you slosh forward. Lampwick, you come to the small pitiful shack that Camilla was resting in. I go in. You open the door. Hey! I look in. There's a figure lying in the bed. Her back is to you. It's dark. You see slow, steady breathing. You can't see their face. What do you do? Camilla. Camilla. Mm. Puppy. I go right up to her. It is in fact Camilla. She's somewhat delirious. She's bandaged as she was. Her things are there. She has not been harmed or touched in any way. She's been resting here as she said she would. I'm gonna uh, in a calming, reassuring fashion, I'm gonna kind of get down to her, grab her hand, the hand that she has, and I'm gonna start to like lean her up. Vámonos, mija. Vámonos, mija. Nos tenemos que ir. Vámonos. She Do I hear him you. speak Spanish? Yeah, he speaks Spanish. Uh, Cherry Bomb has sort of a, a realization. Mm -hmm. um, and then she starts to think about how one of her, one of the other wild children used to talk to her in Spanish. And then I raise my eyebrows and I go, ¿Qué estás haciendo? I turn back to Cherry Bomb, my. You have to help me. I have to get her up. She's a little bit delirious. Vámonos, mija. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Estamos aquí contigo. Vámonos. Sí, sí, sí. sí. And she then I, I go and I, I, I put my hand around her, her hip and try to carry her. Because I know that she's, she's got the one, the one arm around Lampwick. And then I try to lift her up on, on the other side. And as soon as she enters, like, and starts to touch Camila, I will say to Camila, 
Es tu mamá. Ya est estamos aquí todos juntos. Mamá, mamá. She, uh, she is completely delirious. This woman is out of it. You see that the wound is seeping blood. Her hand has been removed, like up past the wrist, uh, about halfway. And she is, from what you can tell, very pregnant. You don't know time. You don't use time the same way that many of the echoes do. But she's, um, she's in her third trimester, which you don't use the word trimester, but you know that she's, she's close. It won't be long. In fact, in a month, it may be any time, you know? So you, you kind of sense all this, you kind of size her up and know what's going on. And you help this woman who you don't know, uh, her hair, she's very pretty, but she's kind of haggard and weak looking. Her hair kind of falls in front of her. Um, she's got a muscular build. You can tell that she's been tr like, like everyone in the apocalypse. She's, she's no slouch, even though she's very weak right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, you carry her out. Um, Lampwick, you also are helping, or are you walking out on your own? I'm helping, right. uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Chira and Marcus, you make it up through the street, and you see these three individuals coming out of the building. And Achira, you breathe a sigh of relief as you realize that Camilla is actually all right, or seems to be. I'd hope that she'd be okay. There is the same opening that we came in from. I think we should make our way to it now. Achira's uh, gonna lead the way. If I see Achira and I see her heading in a whatever direction with any kind of determination, I'm gonna follow right behind. So I'll take the weight of Camila. <laughs> What are you I'm doing? I'm still helping. I'm still helping. You're I'm just going to lead us. Yeah, I'm going to oh, lead we're, us. Are we going in yeah. a certain direction? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're heading towards oh where we originally entered, and Achira is um, pointing forward to, uh, like, make sure to clear the way. And if Achira takes point and they follow, Lumplick follow, and thus Cherry Bomb, Marcus will take rear, <clears throat> looking out, just making sure nothing's looking at us. Nothing's trying anything. If I see any person, I'm taking a shot. Do you say right. that out loud? Because Achira will totally agree. No. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say Cherry Bomb's in the back. I, I, mean, I would assume that Lepwick has most of the weight. Uh, not because, mm -hmm. you know, you're a woman, but because he's big man. Of uh, course. Uh, yeah, big, yeah, use that muscle. Uh, but... Um, if she would look, you would see that like he is in full military mode. This woman is very pregnant. <clears throat> Which, it's been a long time, Marcus, since you've seen anyone carrying a child. Uh, I, I, at this moment, I've noted it, but it's not my focus. Yeah. yeah. I just take a look back to, to just to be like kind of wild eyed, like, what are we doing? Like that type of thing with, with Marcus. And, just like, uh, and I'm like, you know, helping with the weight. Faith. The Rattler is rumbling as you circle around the back of Sullivan Town. You got here before the others. They weren't far behind because of your detour. It took you a little longer to get here, and it looks like Riggs and the whole remains of the Citadel force that was clearing out the Marauder Labyrinth have made their way back and it looks like they're going down the main road and, well, doing what Riggs likes to do and forcing their way through the main gates using the tank. What do you want to do? You've got this vehicle. You've got weaponry. There are other entrances that you could try. I want to make my way to the last place I remember seeing <clears throat> Achira and Lampwick before we, we left this area. Um, if I can remember any direct path to that or... Well, you'd have like to get it. through the walls and the walls mm -hmm. are circular all the way around. Um, you know that there was a north gate. That's what it looks like the Citadel is going to charge through. So if you just want to join up with them, you can make your way through. But if you want to beat the Citadel, you're probably going to have to look for another gate. I'll do that. I'll look for another gate. There is a southern gate. It's much smaller, and the doors are wide open. Uh, 
I drive right in with my armored vehicle, all my shit. I don't give a fuck what is going to happen to me at this point. I am looking for a Chira, I am looking for a Limpwick, and I don't care what happens to me. Boss. Tell me what notes? the plan is. Yeah, look, it's not notes. I just want to serve the best interest of both of us here. You know, I'm along for the ride on this one. So, you know, you may have a hard on to die, but I'd like to maybe live through this. I, I've been through a lot. So, uh, it, you want to find somebody or what, what are we doing here? Hmm. We are looking for a Chira and a Lampwick. They are two other rag and bone people, but they were there in that video. Yeah, they I know were... about them. Kusanagi told me everything. Some shit happened with my brother and no one is telling me the truth. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Rowan's a little too far away. These two are closer. And I won't really care as much if I kill them. All right. That's what we're going to do. And he pulls one of the guns off the racks. It's a it's a pistol. And he struggles to like load it as he's trying to hold on to this, this pistol in his hand. Was Max missing just an arm or was he also missing a leg? I can't remember. He's missing an... Uh, an arm and uh -huh. a foot. A foot. Thanks. He can get around. He's just not quick. Okay. And uh, the wounds are real fresh, so he's not much use. And in all this mud, he might get an infection and die anyway. Okay. Hey. All right. Let's. But in the time way. that it took you to get here, he has rewired the radio, and on the rattler you have a working radio. Hmm. that has a uh, full long range access if you choose to use it. Uh, you hear the Citadel making announcements, you're on their channels, you know exactly what they're doing and what they're planning on doing. The choice is up to you. Hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, continue to try to just get inside uh, the town. Um, and again, look for that last place that I saw them, that I remember them uh, being in. All right, so you're moving down towards the north end of the gate, but you're heading up the main street from the southern end. You see the gazebo that has no further smoke coming out of it. All of these barrels have been knocked over and this horrid black oily liquid is spilt everywhere. It's not black bile, it looks like crude oil. And it's filling the street in this area and the fires are all stamped out but there's this horrid acrid burnt smell and there's a set of stairs leading down into some sort of cellar it's like a, a, a tornado shelter and um you see that and then you just see the same sad huts that have been cobbled together using scrap iron and wood do you continue to the north uh, yes, I continue. The rumble of the ATV prevents you from hearing very much. You know also that you'll be signaling to everyone that you're approaching. This vehicle runs on biodiesel and is not quiet. I feel like this is a warning. Um, I'm gonna stop. Do I remember? Uh, the radio and all that happening. In, the, do I remember that Sullivan Town has a radio? Yes. Was I there for that? You've used it. Okay. Um, it's a while ago. <laughs> it's all right. um, I'm going to stop for a second and um, take a look at the radio. All right, Max, you said this, this shit works. I can call anywhere, so. Yeah, anything right. within range, you should be able to find it. You just uh, strike through those dials. I'd be careful, though. There's some uh, hostiles out of here. Yeah, well. That's fine at this point. I don't really give a shit. I you call keep saying that, but uh, I just would like to remind you that my services are uh, absolutely free to you for saving my life, but I would like for that life to continue on a little well, longer. You're going to be fine. You're with me. I uh, want to call into Sullivan Town to just whatever open channel they have. Um, Right. And see, just see if anyone will pick up or if it's on some sort of like announcement system. Yeah. You start scrubbing the channels. You don't need to make a digital systems rule. Max does it for you. It's very good. 
Shira, Marcus, Cherry Bomb, Lampwick. You have Camilla, you're in the streets. The rumble continues, and then you hear a loud, breaking sound. Metal bending unwillingly under the sound of something being smashed. It's coming from the front gate. Everything that's... shakes. We're not headed towards that, clearly. We're headed somewhere else. Off to Where the are side. you headed? Uh, uh, to, the, to, the same, to the same opening that Achira escaped from and brought people into, which is not near the front gate. You start making your way there. As you do, you pass that cabin, that small hut that they kept you in, Achira doors open, nothing has changed. Cherry, we might need a distraction. Can you can you set one of the set one of the Maltovs that you made to burn slow in here? Yeah. Especially made. We warned if we set something off in here that would let them know that someone was here recently. There's a fucking tank coming through the front gates. We just need them not to pay attention when we go out the side. I'm open to ideas and I'm running on fumes. I look at Cherry and I nod my head. Okay. And then I take a, a match and I strike it on my, my belt and I, I light it and then I um I toss it to where we need it to be. Or like I, I take it to the seats in. Yeah, you strike a homemade match against your belt. You've got a striker on it, and it lights. You light the bottle, and you throw the Molotov. Do you throw it at one of the buildings? Uh, I do. I throw it out of the building that we uh, get, got out of. Cherry, you're, you've done a fair work, uh, amount of arson in the past. It's wet out here. You're going to want to put that on the interior of the building, probably, to make it burn. Okay. Um, so I, I go to, like, try to chuck it through the window, and then I'm like... <sighs> Uh, and then I go in there and I like <laughs> run, try to run in time to like put it in there um, <laughs> in the building in the open door. I toss it into the open door. You break away from the group for a moment. Achira up. takes up Camilla's weight while Cherry runs off. All right. Well, you, anyone who's carrying because of all of you, you were able to make decent time, but Camilla is slowing you down. Cherry mm -hmm. Bomb on her own is able to move fairly quickly. You break away and you set the building on fire. Because you've done that and not just left it to luck, I'm not going to make you make a roll. The building okay. burns. Mm -hmm. And this was the building that we had just gotten Camilla out of the shack, mm -hmm. or is this? Yeah, that, that shack, yeah. No, it's the room that Achira was in, I believe, is what you were passing. Oh, Achira, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. Achira's room. That's right. We stayed. It's, it's yeah. the one that Achira passed out in, and Lampwick stared at her while she slept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that room. And while yeah. while um, Cherry Bomb is setting that, I see that Achira and Lampwick and Camilla are starting to go. I'm just waiting to see that cherry bomb can start running i have a feeling she might be faster than me um but i still just want to keep an eye on her so the minute she comes back that's when i start to go all right so you you cover her as she does this and cherry bomb you see the sparks mm -hmm. everything starts to burn you know that you've done a good job as it falls into the cot and the cot burns so then you start running um all of you can make a spot listen check cool yeah, as we run and this burns i'll turn to achira and as i recall that that's where we were kind of holding up for a little while. Is there anything in there that we forgot? You got all uh, your stuff that you came with, right? Like I ever leave without my stuff. You're the one that likes to leave your stuff behind. I just you complain uh, when I retrieve it and keep some. <laughs> you still have some of my stuff. Marcus, still that's three degrees of failure. You mean your lighter? No. With the, the lion's head embossed on it? Yes, I like that that's lighter. mine. Nope, it's my that's favorite. my lighter. That's my lighter. Achira, you have one degree of failure. I keep I, it. I am definitely going to oh, keep yours. Actually, uh, since Cherry Bomb rolled four, I, uh, dang. As you know what? I think, I, think, I think I'm okay in good company here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna keep my competency because I feel like things are about to get real hairy. So both <laughs> of you are going to hold on to your competency and let the individuals who rolled four degrees of success critically succeeding carry the weight. That sounds like I'm giving Ouch. up. Right? Don't like how that sounds, but yes. <gasps> there is no are judgment you, in you, my statement. Are you saying that this is a second location hazard, Knox? Mm, 
you are in the same location hazard that you've been in the entire time. Oh. Well, we stopped. exited the building. It's and now we're the building. It's the entire town. Fair oh. enough. Fair enough. You'll um, see. I'll I'll go ahead and put in two competency points to make it one degree of success. So this isn't at a degree of failure. Very well. Now then, Lampwick and Cherry Bomb, both of you critically succeeded. Yeah. You hear the sputter of a different electronic sound. A radio. It's in a shack up ahead, to your left, off a small branch away from where you're headed. I Faith, look over at Lampwick. What are you saying on the radio? <clears throat> uh, anyone in Sullivan Town? Oh, just actually, before, before I do this, um, the direction I'm heading in is the 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 main gate is the north gate. The main gate is the south gate. The main gate is the north gate. You came in through the south gate. Got it. Okay. And I'm heading north. Um, um, all right. Uh, this is a warning for anyone in Sullivan Town. There is a something bad coming uh, from the main gate. Uh, escape through the back. There is a tank coming for you. No one's going to survive this. You y'all better go. Um, for you, Cherry Bomb, you don't recognize the voice. There is a certain structure to the message that makes you think that it might be an echo. Uh, however, Lampwick, you do recognize the voice with four degrees mm -hmm. of success. Uh, and, uh, Cherry, you hear it. What? I will bring uh, a Cherry's attention to that. That's Faith on the other side of that radio. Did you hear that? That's Faith. I heard some of it and from what i could tell it it was a lot of white noise and citadel is about to level a town which is what they normally do we need to get out of here um and also another question how far away from us is marcus marcus how far away are you um you were staying I, close to cherry bombs so i'm I close to cherry yeah yeah i was just making sure that they um was safe after they set the flame so I'm either right next to her or right in front of her. So behind us, yes, catching behind up to us. Yeah. So in the middle of this, like during our conversation, a part of my spot listen goes to the radio, but also goes over my head, over my over, over my shoulder, looking behind me to see if Marcus had overheard anything in particular. Just sort of reading his face. It doesn't seem like Marcus heard the radio, if that's what you're asking. That's plenty for me but my attention goes back on the cheer uh so I, I i mean do we need that radio or do we need to get the hell out of here the radio is too big for us to take with us if we oh, want to well. sabotage it i can grab the batteries but i don't think it's <sighs> how do we know we can trust that right how do we know it's true well we know who that way. is we know we know who that is. Oh, you guys know who that is. We I know, know exactly who that, that is. That's not saying much for me. It's she not will, saying much for us either, honestly. Level this entire town. We have got to get the fuck out now. Let's go. Keep moving. Uh, Achira looks over at Cherry and sees if uh, she'll take back the weight of Camilla. Things start I, exploding I move in and I, near I the take north the gate. There is a fire burning where you left it, but there are new fires that are cropping up from the north side of the gate. You hear gunfire and shouting. Achira breaks a little bit off, long gun back to the ready now that she doesn't have um, Camilla's weight on and she's uh, covering the party uh, from, she's flanking if Marcus is behind. Yes. Um, um hearing the the gunfire and all that i'm still i'm still keeping pace but i've definitely turned to make sure that uh again nothing's trying to get to jump on us because if so i'm shooting first you're moving also, closer don't shoot her shoot who? her her name's faith she said she was coming through the south gate just I mean, if she shoots first, just maybe wound. I can't explain it right now. If There's she shoots she first, shoots. If. she's volatile, but 
The <laughs> world that's, is something, that's something else that I can explain. I don't think we'll run into her, but... That's number just, two. Look, we and can't just kill can everybody. There's allies that we have here. We're not out on our own. No everybody one's trying to else. kill everybody, but we are trying to stay safe. And right now I'm traveling with folk that I can't trust. Well, I'm telling you that we should try to keep people safe that we may encounter because they may not necessarily be enemies. Says the one who just spoke on the radio mentioning that they're about to level a town. That was a warning. I'm just saying, let's just avoid her for now. That's That's all I'm asking. There's a lot of history there with her and if we she ask you not to shoot, then just keep just, that in mind. She just lost her brother, and she might not be thinking correctly, and I've been there. That's all I'm saying. Not keeping shit in mind other than our safety. Then let's keep moving. We're wasting time. You are arguing in the middle of the stream. We're not moving? What? <laughs> I'm trying, like, Lampwick and I are arguing. We're, like, tugging uh, her in different directions. We're like, <laughs> this is what happens when you... Um, you know that someone's too nice and you prey on that niceness. It's starting to become waning. He keeps moving. Mm. Mm. Ooh, that's the thing. Achira's not nice, but she's got some weak points and everything's coming up weak points. You're making your way to the eastern side of the wall where Achira recalls an entrance, the same entrance that all of you used. I need each of you. to roll an endurance check. While you're making those rolls, Faith, you've made your call out on the radio. There's no response. <sighs> Beta Max looks at you. I was just hoping it would flush him out, but. Yeah, no such luck, eh, boss? No. Should we go hunting? We're gonna have to go hunting. And... I can drive I... this thing, I think. Sure. Let's do you, that. You go on foot, I can back you up with this. I'll run over anyone that gets in the way. Sounds good, thanks. Actually pretty helpful. Yeah. And so that I I would like to go searching for them, but I don't want to metagame this because I, I know where they are. Like, so obviously, can I can I roll to find them instead? Absolutely. See, you are okay. uh, trained in these things. The Citadel has trained you well in flushing out your prey and um, tracking individuals and in reading situations like this. You have been built for this from your very, very earliest years. Make a search check. And while you're oh. making that search check, I'm going to go back to the other group. Uh, so Endurance, Achira, you have one degree of failure. Lampwick, you have four degrees of failure. Marcus, you have one degree of failure. And Cherry Bomb, you have one degree of failure. Uh, is it a possibility for me to do a stealth roll? It depends on what you're trying to do. Um, well, with my dear, my endurance being one degree of failure, I was thinking that that's because, um, like before, Achira has slowed down to then either match the party or to then go into stealth. And since she does not have Camilla's weight, um, I'm I'm just trying to think if like maybe she would be stealthing or doing something else. I'm Otherwise, I can. It. Okay. However, before you roll. You're doing this because you're exhausted. All of you are starting to feel the effects of the long day. You have all been at this for various reasons. Lampwick, mm -hmm. you don't feel it until it hits you like a ton of brick. Are you going to keep the four degrees of failure? Nope. I'm going to use five competency points and make that one success, if I may. You start to feel it. You start to feel this, like, hunger rise up inside of you and your stomach turns and you swear you feel something move inside of you but you steal your mind and it goes away you will 
this hunger away and you don't feel anything other than your need to move forward. Atira, you are going to roll a stealth, but you're going to do so with one black die of difficulty as you are tired. Oy. Alrighty. As low as possible. Oh, yes. Four degrees of success is critical. You slip into the shadows effortlessly. This is where you live. Marcus, Cherry Bomb, are you writing out your failures? Yeah, it's one. Um, it's not the worst thing, and I just feel like he is trained to, especially in the past, he's trained to work through even the toughest situations. <laughs> even once you get tired, you still got to keep going. So he's just going to write it out. I will um, use one for Marcus, and then I will use my remaining two. You help to urge Marcus forward, and you spend all of the competency. And in fact, you feel Cherry's hand on your back, Marcus, and it's strangely comforting in all of this. Let's go. Um, he keeps going, but again, still trained out. All right start to approach the entrance, the hole that you use. Marcus, you get there first. Three cars have been tumbled over and it's blocked. Three cars have been tumbled over recently? Three Very cars recently. Something knocked them over and came through or something deliberately blocked this? That's a good question. Your mind begins to assess the situation. I would like for you to make a search check. I can use the recon with this right now. Yes. I don't, okay, I, I don't. I forget what we use with it. Yeah, that. you start studying the area around you. Don't fuck me over. You fuck me over. Two degrees um, of failure. Tartar sauce, tartar sauce, tartar sauce. We got to get out. I'm using three um, to make it one. With one degree of success, you think this was intentional. This wasn't from the tank hitting the wall. Someone knew about this place and blocked your own exit. The cars are too neat. If this had just happened, the mud would be a fresher. And even though it's raining, there are signs that it's dried in certain spots. This then is I, intentional. Then I have a question. How long have we been in Sullivan Town? Not very long. And how far away are we now from where we got Lamprook? I'm asking these questions because I'm trying to figure out how this happened without anyone hearing cars mm -hmm. being barricading something. That's well, all. Looking at it, you're not certain that they were just dropped here. Something might have moved them. It's the Romero. You okay. don't know. The answer is you don't know. You That's should have probably know. heard crunching metal or a crash or something. Yeah. It's been yep. nothing but quiet the whole time that you've been here. Ooh. However, yeah. I will remind you, you walked all the way across town. We did. You were on the far western side of town. You passed by a lot when Robin led you there. This is closer to where you first found Robin. Okay. And you know what Robin was trying to do. Yep. He was trying to lead you into a trap. Yep. So they knew you were coming. Yep. You're correct. I'm just now putting all No, I'm together. playing it all out for you here, though. I'm happy to do it. Uh, um, so you're blocked. What do the four of you do as you all... I mean, Achira, you're actually off in the distance being uh, stealthy in the shadows, but the other three of you are together, and your entrance is blocked. You hear gunfire, 
There are explosions and fire and shouts like military hoots and hollers as individuals take joy in the destruction they're wreaking on this town. Akira sees the fact that they don't go through, so she sees, you know, she sees that they're not going through. That's what she's seeing. I'm laying this out really quickly just so you understand why I'm saying this. We got here. Lampwick should have been captured. He wasn't captured. Found out that Akira and Lampwick are hiding something. He doesn't know what that is. Go get Camilla, whatever. We get here. This is now blocked. Robin was also in on it. Lampwick is wearing the robes. He looks at Lampwick. He points the gun at Lampwick. Why are we stuck in here? I have no idea. This was the way that you came in, wasn't it? It was. Then we need to find another way out. How did you make this a way in? It wasn't blocked when we got here. Then we need to make another way out. Is this the one thing you weren't telling us, huh? huh? This is not, I don't know anything about this. We're wasting time. We need to find a way out. We are wasting time, but this is crucial. What can make that be like it is without us knowing anything? Do you know anything? Achira speaks from the shadows. It had to be the hybrid. It had to be the hybrid Romero. Something strong enough to move something like that? Yeah. It had to be it. We can't go out through the north. We can Where do follow we go? the wall to the south. And if Faith tries to stop us, we'll stop her. Then we need to move. And if we can find another way out along the wall as we go south, then we have to take it. But we need to move now away from the north. He follows the wall and he starts to go. There's a sputter as that electrical sound from the towers returns. Do they see the point? We were children of the apocalypse. The days of your sin are at an end. For too long have you tarried in this rotten, rotten garden. And now the hand of Malachi shall cleanse you as the prophet brings forth the bounty A song begins to play, crackling on a record. It's the song that you've heard over and over again from Mother Hodge. Only sung by some long ago singer trapped on wax. And as Children of the Valley rings through Sullivan Town. From above, the shattered overpass, a horde of Romero's moves and starts plunging into the town. From the sky, they fall like lemmings, dropping one by one, smashing into the steel buildings below with loud thuds. And from within that horde, shadows move quickly. That is where we're going to end our session tonight.